So welcome to the Alternative Healers Coffee Chat. We are Victoria Amador, Janelle Mulligan. And the purpose of this podcast is to introduce or reacquaint um, listeners to different healing modalities that may help them feel more in tune with themselves and empower them with their healing. So today we are introducing Caroline. Caroline does Akashic readings and has been offering her services to the public for a little over two years through Blue Owl Wisdom. Uh, her journey, her awakening journey started about 10 years ago and brought her deep into the inner work, personal revelation, and recognizing the true value of growing both individually and within this community. Thank you so much for joining us, Caroline. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. I'm excited for this discussion today. We are too. So I know I found you on TikTok, um, probably 2020 when we started the pandemic and, and all of that and have been enjoying watching your journey from engineer to Akashic soul, spiritual person. Would you like to share a little bit about how that came to be oh. for you? Oh my goodness. <laughs> It, that's a big story, but I think it's also like a really important story. So 10 years ago, I was in the middle of engineering school, right? It was 2012. I, I want to say like, this is the beginning of my awakening because that was the point where I really hit like my first dark night of the soul as people like to define it of what am I doing with my life? Which I think is just a natural progression the way society has everything set up where you just school 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 we're here for doing things right getting a gold star getting an a plus and then you just get shipped off to college because that's the right thing to do <laughs> and I there I was two years into engineering and I was like I don't want to do this what am I here for what's going on and um on top of all of these inner demons kind of coming to the surface I then started having these experiences of just feeling uneasy, feeling like I'm being watched, feeling like there's just something going on. Like my sensitive side started resurfacing again. The deeper I went into questioning like what I actually wanted, I started questioning like who am I and what's actually going on, turning more inwards toward that sensitivity that I think we all are naturally born with as children. We're so mm -hmm. open to everything. Yep. But then through life, we just kind of get those blinders on of, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do to be a normal, successful human being. And this is what I'm going to do. Yep. And I don't have time or space for any of this more sensitive stuff. So that's where the unfolding started, but I wasn't quite ready to embrace what spirituality was and how you explore that and what any of it means outside of like astrology or tarot or those like easy, easily accessible things through YouTube and through magazines and through news articles and blogs. Um, and I, I continued my degree. I ended up working as an engineer for probably seven, eight years, seven years. Um, and it was in 2018 that I had my first like really big experience of like, okay, there's something else going on here that I need to take this more seriously. What happened? Um, well, my grandfather passed away. So death yeah. starts to unearth a lot of these things. So when my grandfather passed away, there was a lot of inner turmoil because it usually brings out a lot of the aspects of ourselves we haven't faced yet and the entire family unit you know yeah all the things that come with family passing but after he had passed I felt him so closely and I actually ended up out of nowhere because I wasn't like the spokesperson for my family in any way I wasn't like this big well let me do the speaking let me do the thing let me do this but I felt like I had to write his eulogy even though I was never asked to do it so I oh. started writing and all of a sudden these words started coming out of me from a space mm -hmm. I couldn't define where it came from and I was like okay there's something bigger going on because that eulogy turned out to be so healing for so many people and I didn't even realize it wow yeah so I was like okay there's something bigger going on here so I had no clue what to do with it I had no clue what it meant and I started trying to figure out what it meant. And then I started getting scared and overwhelmed because when we first start trying to explore, we try to consume so much. 
So I got into it and then I got out of it and I got into it and I got out of it. Um, and then 2019 happened and then we went into 2020 and we all had a lot of time to sit and think and reflect about <laughs> what any of this means. And I think there was really like this beautiful spiritual renaissance happening in the background as well, where there's a lot of people who have this, like this 10 year, like 2012 and then like 2018 and then 2020, like a lot of people have <laughs> the same series of awakening moments that happened in this progression. So I think because there was more energy collectively behind these experiences, it became something and it yeah. became normalized almost and safer yeah. for people to explore and talk about it, which I thought was just the cool thing about tiktok right i i got onto tiktok because it was interesting and people were doing silly dances and then suddenly i found my way into spiritual tiktok and i was like oh my god there's other people like me (laughs) (laughs) yep (laughs) exactly and the rest is kind of history so it was a lot of stumbling it was a Mm. lot of shadow work I attribute a lot of the first few years of my awakening journey to the shadow work and to seeking therapy and doing a lot of the mundane finding of self and addressing emotions and past experiences and really just kind of getting right with myself before I could even approach anything beyond just human existence yeah that's beautiful so would you like to t- uh, share with us how did you get started with uh, Akashi reading because that's definitely one of my favorite things to do (laughs) yeah me too so akashic reading came to me after a series of other interests i was pursuing so i started with energy healing i feel like energy healing is a really comfortable way for people to get introduced to spiritual practice and through my study of reiki and through practice of reiki and intuitive energy healing i realized i was doing something that wasn't necessarily reiki And that's what led me into shamanic study and shamanic healing, westernized shamanic healing. So there's no um, specific region or area that I've studied. It's just shamanic journeying and partnering with spirit allies and working in the upper middle and lower worlds and allowing my spirit team to show me and teach me and guide me. So through that group, I ended up meeting other Akashic Records readers and they were like, I think you would be really good at this. Have you ever looked into it? And I was like, I don't even know what that means. I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> like, I, part of me wishes that I did, so I didn't feel silly. But at this point, I'm like, what? Are the, a That's lot of okay. us go through this. Like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> and so I started looking deeper into it. And kind of like we were talking about before, there's a lot of classes that were like $1,000 and more. More. I was like, yeah. I don't have $1,000 to spend on this. But- I started listening to this podcast and um, the podcast creator, podcast creator was an Akashic Records reader. And as I found her through a mutual friend of ours who was interviewed on her podcast, she was announcing the start of a two month course where she was doing intro Mm -hmm. foundation to the Akashic Records. And it was a much better price point. I think it was like $300 (laughs) or something. I was like, I can do $300. (laughs) That's doable. (laughs) So I took her course and for the first few weeks, we're going through these foundational studies of energetics and our empowerment journey and just the introductory information. I was like, what does this have to do with the Akashic records? I don't get it. And then we got into the last few weeks where we actually were in the Akashic records and we were opening them. We were sitting in the space and I was like, oh, I get why we had that foundational stuff. And then I went, I've already been doing this, but it's been very intimidating because it would give me energetic motion sickness and I wouldn't know what it was. I wouldn't know what to call it. I didn't know what any of it meant, but that container gave me a framework to better understand and for my ego, my monkey brain to accept what was happening rather than question it constantly. It's so it's so interesting how once we have something tangible to put a framework on like the skeleton of the idea then suddenly it's like oh right okay so that fear inside of me and those questions inside of me have something to at least flow with to begin establishing that comfort so 
that was the journey with the Akashic Records. And then I took a lot of time just practicing with people, practicing with friends, working within my own records to be like, okay, what does this mean? What do these, so why my, why my players were being activated in ways I wasn't used to them being activated. And then I was like, okay, I think I have a good understanding of what's happening. So I opened um, like really low price point offer, offers for people to work with, with me. And then it just kind of went from there. Like, I think I did a trade with one bigger creator on social media and then she recommended me. And then that was, that was kind Beautiful. of it for the rest of 2020. And uh, it was, it was a whirlwind actually. And I think it's Can funny. Yeah, of course. Can I ask you, you mentioned some fears. Um, what fears were you experiencing when you were trying to do the Akashic Records? Well, I guess um, before you realized that you were in the Akashic Records. So there's this, for me personally, I've always had this fear of, well, I don't want to do anything wrong. I don't want to do something that's going to hurt people. I don't want to get into anything that I shouldn't be getting into before I'm ready. Because... One thing that I've always had a lot of respect for is practitioners and the way that they help people and they heal people. But I think part of this and part of the reality of the situation is just as much as you can heal, you can also harm people because we live in this dualistic world. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you're okay. That's something that I don't think a lot of people understand fully right when they're getting started is we're held in light and we're held in love by the divine and by these higher powers but after a while that naivety and that new guy like energy that you have when you're doing this work kind of fades away and especially in a world where social media and things like the akashic records are so popular and people are so interested in them it was scary to have that energy and to not really know how far it could go. So that was the fear that I carried around it. Um, I know some people I've worked with have also had like projections of pop culture and social media of entities and energies and these bad things that can come get you in the Akashic Records, but I've never had that personal experience. They're an energy of love. Being there in a grounded space is loving and it's healing, but in the way we interpret the stories within the Akashic and we relay them, they can be really healing or they can cause harm or they can rehash lived trauma in this lifetime. And um, that's something I think ethically people need to have more discussions about. Yeah, I well, the reason why I was interested in your perspective is because I know from experience and from working with many different clients that when they're trying to get to the point where they go to the Akashi records, a lot of them are stuck somewhere in the astral planes and what they experience can be very traumatizing. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of the fears come from. Oh my God, I saw this, I felt this, and they retrieve, we tend to retrieve, right? So it's yeah. interesting that you you completely conquer that fear. Yeah, I um. I'm not sure if it's because the shamanic journeying came first and partnering with my healing guides and my supporting guides helped me to conquer that before I got into the Akashic records, but it, that never really was a fear of mine. It was, okay, we're here. We're going to move into the expansion of the Akashic records. I'm here and I trust the love and the healing that the record keepers have to share with me. And it, it was just a really trusting experience to get there. And then what I did with that after, I was like, oh no, now what do we do? <laughs> That's beautiful. That is. So <clears throat> what if you found your primary clients who are coming to you? What are they looking for your support at, with when they come to you? So this is a, tr I actually spent a lot of time thinking about this question because it is tricky because everyone's so unique in what it is they're seeking out but the common theme I can identify from my seat looking in on all the readings that I've done is they're looking for validation of lived experiences that they themselves are questioning or they're looking for this it's almost like home 
is the best way I could find to describe it. They're looking for home because that home, quote unquote, lives within us and it's reconnecting to yourself because when we're in the Akashic Records, we're in the energy of our pure soul. We're in the just us. It's it's home. So it's kind of relay, like bringing them back to that space. And also I like to teach people that they can do this. They can go back into their records whenever they want. And it's given me some sideways looks, but <laughs> yeah, people are like, I can't do that. I'm not worthy of that. I'm like, yes, you absolutely are. This is your energy. You can yeah. access that. So it's like helping them build the bridge of coming home to themselves. And is that yes, part of beautiful. what helped you create and decide to create the courses and guidance that you do? <clears throat> yeah, I, I like everything pretty much comes back to that, that we ourselves are powerful and we are divine and we're perfect as we are, whether we believe we're perfect or we don't believe we're perfect. And when we put these foundational practices of trust and grounding and listening to our guides and what are my clairs and how are they flowing and where's my energy moving today? And where do I feel it's stiffening today? All of these pieces layered on top of itself is what builds our power and allows us to become a stronger individual so we can feed into a stronger collective. Like everything goes back to the empowered individual creates a stronger collective for the future, for future generations. Mm -hmm. That's gorgeous. That's so true. That is so true. Um, Victoria, I think you had some questions about the one of uh, one or more of Caroline's offerings. Yeah, I was looking into the release and aligning. I want to make sure that um, people that are listening can understand what that is, because I think in 2022, we experienced so much release, but it just continues. So if you can share more about that. So uh... I do. I have an offer called release and I have an offer called clear and align. Are you talking about both of them or one of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of them. So release is an intuitive energy healing that I do. It's It takes elements of what I've understood from my Reiki training and channeling energy. And it takes elements from what I've received in shamanic training. Um, and it puts it all together to help us identify, especially for highly sensitive and empaths, what energy is mine and coming from within and what is external projections being placed upon me that are being brought into my energy so that we can begin to identify and release that which is not mine so that I can have sovereignty of my energy again and I can understand where I'm coming from and what it is that my inner compass is telling me that I need. So release is all about releasing and holding space for people to let go of that, which is not really theirs, not their own inner guidance. So coming back to intuition and the internal guidance. Um, and then of course, rebalancing the energy as traditional energy healing will do and helping to reestablish balance within the energy centers, bringing forward messages, because that, that just comes with whatever territory and intuitive healing I've come across as messages come through from either source or from past on loved ones or from the spirit team. And then clear and align is energy healing with the Akashic records. I've been doing energy healing in the Akashic records, but in the last, probably started around summer last year, I started getting a lot of intuitions and guidance from my own spirit team to go into the Akashic records. Are you being a silly goose? <laughs> and start working with the energy in my own healing and in the healing of the people I was working with. And what I've come to understand from that guidance was there's a profound ability to heal when we get to this focal point, the center point of our Akashic records, especially the pieces that were blocked, blocked from clear and align is an offer where we're energy healing with the Akashic records rather than energy healing inside of the Akashic records, the guidance to bring this offer to my clients and to the collective was from my own spirit team. They were guiding me starting probably mid last year. So 2022 to start sitting in the Akashic records and using the energy inside the personal Akashic records for healing of the individual. And what I've come to find is this is, it takes healing with source and just magnifies it, like amplifies it because we're not healing with something outside of ourselves. We're healing with something in, inside of ourselves from within us. And 
it's been really beautiful the way that it sheds light on the resistances we hold within ourselves that come from this life or past lives and it helps to reacclimate rebalance us in a trying to find the right way to describe it reacclimate and rebalance us in this way that I have never experienced before in all the healings that I've done for people. What I'm doing as a practitioner in this offer is I'm moving into the Akashic records of the individual, channeling messages around the current resistances, which seem to be most directly impacting their current soul lesson. So what's most directly impacting their lived experience in these like recent times. Mm -hmm. And then I ask for guidance on how to get to the center of their energy. So before any of the past wounding, before any of the projections, before any of the just life, the life bullshit we all go through. Yeah. I wanted to know more about the soul purpose. I know that's something that everybody wants to know. What is my purpose? But the way I see it is a series of little purposes and then a big one and i mm -hmm. wanted to get your input on that as from an akashic reader perspective so uh, with the akashic records everything is such big information it's such big it's really expansive so i had to come up with my own way of organizing soul purpose because it is such a big topic so the way i personally read soul purpose is we have a soul purpose over multiple lifetimes. So an overarching theme of an incarnation cycle. And then on top of that, we also have our individual soul missions. So each individual lifetime and how it builds into that purpose. That's how I like to differentiate. But then on top of this soul purpose, what I've come to find. So whether your soul purpose is learning to trust yourself and follow your inspiration or bringing awareness to lessons and knowledge for the collective or whatever it may be. It all comes down to we're here to be human and to live a human experience. No matter what the purpose is, the mm -hmm. common theme is we're here to live a human life and take those lessons of learning a human life and apply them to our knowledge base with on a soul level or within our role of the collective, whatever that may be for the individual. And then even throughout our, our lifetime, our current lifetime, based on the decisions we make, based on the people we cross paths with, based on the soul group that we interact with, oh, buddy, that purpose evolves and it changes and mm -hmm. it's it's not a stationary stagnant idea or theory mm. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's something that's constantly evolving beautiful so one of the questions that we had caroline is about free will and it is something that coming from occult societies there is a lot of debate about the free will and in, in my mind it doesn't make sense because I truly believe in free will and I would love to get the perspective from you and Janelle about free will for this conversation Ooh, yeah free will I think is pretty like a universal law to call it for lack of a better term that no one can override like our free will is always at play which is why it's so hard for people to predict the future or like know what the lottery numbers are and all those cliches people say about psychics mm -hmm. and um every single moment we're making a million different decisions whether we know it or not energetically and emotionally and mentally and each of these decisions have their own ripple effect that will change the way everyone else's ripple is gonna hit each other which is I think beautiful and confusing and frustrating all at the same time where like, like in one minute we feel like we have everything together we're on the right track and the next minute we're like wait a minute none of that makes sense anymore why why did I ever think that was possible and I think um that that's a big it it comes into play in so many different ways um and it keeps us focused in the present moment with like free will has this big umbrella impact on the human existence so I don't think that anyone has the power and ability to override my free will unless I allow them to which again is my choice right. um like that was one of the things we went over 
in one of the shamanic workshops that I was in about um, extractions is we have we have full authority over our energy and it's only when we allow someone to project their energy into us and we accept it as truth that's when the extraction becomes embedded with I mean the intrusion becomes embedded within our energy and the Mm -hmm. same thing I think goes across all all aspects of human existence and energetic everything definitely I I agree um especially like you said the choice um what I see so many people kind of giving away that power that they do ultimately have choices every moment of every day and when they're like well this happened to me yes it happened but then how did you act or react like that was you are part of that energetic dance knowingly or unknowingly kind of like you said and that we get we do have the free will and the awareness if we allow ourselves to then interact and deal with it accordingly and transmute that energy in a way that is more beneficial for us in the collective versus Mm -hmm. just saying, Oh, I'm the victim and just kind of (laughs) laying there and taking it. Um, We we do have that power. uh, And that is to me, part of that free will. Absolutely. So with the, uh, that almost reminds me of um, that energy of Shiva, where you have all of these different arms coming in it's so chaotic one thing that you do definitely affects the other even though it may seem so completely different Mm -hmm. definitely absolutely to that moment yeah (laughs) so in terms of the um, clients that you have we always want to know what are the clients the people that are coming to you with you know like they they do need a validation but at the same time there is always a result what are the results that you're experiencing with your clients? So for like my readings and for my energy healings, unless it's someone that wants to see me quarterly or monthly, like a lot of the time it's one and done. I'm like a little pit stop or like a little mile marker on their spiritual awakening journey. Um, I call it the activator where like I activate knowledge or I activate confidence or awareness. And then they kind of move on in their own little direction, their own ripple in a different direction. Um, so for those short-term clients, what I've, what I'm able to observe and what they've told me through their own written testimony is they feel peace and confidence in the existence of their Akashic records and their ability to access the Akashic records, or they feel more connected to themselves energetically after energy healing and the peace and like release of stress that comes with that feeling fully connected to yourself again and grounded back into the earth's energy um with my more long-term clients so i do have so like soul purpose discovery is an eight-week program and and then intro to the akashic records once that relaunches is like a i haven't decided if it's going to be two months or or three months it's probably going to be another eight-week program because that's getting completely revamped um and then i think those are my two current long-term quote-unquote offers other than mentoring with me but through those experiences it's finding community it's finding confidence in the ability to, to do this work seeing that it is actually simple the hardest part is learning to trust yourself and moving with yourself in every single moment because life wants to pull you outside of the moment um and then with the mentoring it's it's I actually funny story I had one person report back to me that she had an annual physical with her doctor after doing soul purpose Mm -hmm. discovery and then moving into my empowered soul monthly membership it's like a mentoring container that I do and she said that her doctor was shocked at how much lower her blood pressure was from one year to the next and she's like I hadn't really changed anything other than I was doing your meditations and I just felt I felt more connected and I started to trust myself and I knew I wasn't crazy and that these things I was experiencing weren't like a mental breakdown. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's not to say that spirituality can bypass mental care like that. Those are two separate things, but in this little bubble circumstance, like she knew that what she was experiencing 
wasn't made up in her head. And like, that was where a lot of discomfort was coming from with her in her experience, but everyone's going to have their own experience. So spirituality does not equal mental health care. Those are <laughs> right, two right, things. Right. It is important to know that the amount of people that we see that need validation, that need to know that they're not going crazy because it is very chaotic. The whole awakening process can be very traumatizing. And for many people, it's a lifelong yeah. process. So having someone to hold space is it's like magic. It oh, yeah. really is. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of cognitive dissonance. I think a lot of us go through in that awakening process in that spiritual evolution process because for so long we were told it wasn't real that if if you had these the guidance and you followed your gut and and intuition that you were crazy in some way and now that it is becoming more well known and spoken of and to what you said earlier with tiktok i did the same thing it was like oh my goodness there are all of these people that actually think similarly to me. And I did not even realize this was truly a thing. I thought I was in some small bubble in some corner of the world. And so when you get to that point of being able to um, be able to go, okay, th this has this potential of being real and I get to step into this power with it and know I'm not alone um, it helps relieve that cognitive dissonance, that internal heart, mind, soul fighting that we seem to go through in that process. Um, and to your point, Victoria, it is a lifelong process. As we develop the skills, then there's always another one to learn or grow or <laughs> um, explore. So definitely, I, I agree. Um so Caroline, for you, what do you feel is kind of the next level of your exploration? What what do you feel is kind of your next um, challenge, internal self-challenge for yourself? So I have been very much drawn to becoming more trauma-informed. So making sure, like I was saying at the very beginning, one of the things that's always been a fear of mine is causing harm whether that be through my marketing or through the communities that I build or through the work I'm doing one-on-one -on -one with people, I want to help someone feel if not, at the very least, I want them to feel like nothing's changed. And at the very best, I want them to feel like they've come home to themselves. I never want to make someone leave a space with me and feel disempowered or feel afraid or feel like they have to put themselves out there or like overextend themselves energetically or financially or emotionally to be in space with me. So I'm, I really want to dedicate time now in my development to make sure that I'm learning from trauma-informed and ethical practitioners and that I'm seeking out trainings that are trauma-informed and ethical because the beauty of having this open community and this free sharing and social media is also the expansion of spiritual psychosis and, and just not grounded teaching and people that experience banded really rapidly and having a following that they got that following should they have gotten that following and become a teacher I don't know but that's for each individual's journey and, and discovery and they're doing their own thing in their own way I just know personally I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to not start a cult or cause harm to anyone <laughs> so that's funny because I had a client out of Spain Madrid and she, unlike you, because you're doing everything that you need to do, but unlike you, she had a lot of diplomas and a lot of like B level degrees and she couldn't do anything with it because she was so afraid of harming someone with what she was doing. And after, I mean, it took her a couple of, se a few sessions because it, it got to the point where she was she has so many degrees. It was insane, like chemists and, you know, like PhD. And she couldn't just practice what she was doing. After six sessions, she is practicing. She is actually helping people do amazing things with her hypnotherapy practice, which, which I find completely mind-blowing. In a past life, she was killed for helping someone. And she was blamed for killing 
um, letting someone die because she was a curandera, she was a shaman. So I, mm -hmm. I just, you know, it remind it reminded me of that. <laughs> so, well, yeah. and and I think when you have the degrees, and, and Caroline, you can you know validate or disagree. Um, I'm an attorney. You know, uh, that is my education. So sometimes when you have the the academic background, you're you think the only way to get from point A to point B is to logically think through and also that there's somewhere to find the answers. And what to me going on the spiritual journey is about trusting. It's putting the academic aside and going, okay, these are all resources I have in the back of my head now that will help me understand my clients and understand the people I'm trying to help. But at the same time, or let me rephrase that, and at the same time, um, I have to trust the instincts and the abilities that I've been given and giving myself permission to trust has been one of the hardest. Um, and I think that's kind of where all three of us, what we do for our clients is help give them that trust, show them that it is true and valid and beautiful and possible to do ethically, morally, and safely. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Like there's definitely past life, I call it past life bruising, which prevents us from moving forward in our purpose or in what we're guided to do, which leaves us in these, they're not a spiral. I always see them as like a roundabout or a rotary where you're just kind of stuck in the same loop. And like, you see the off ramp and you're like, I can take that off ramp if I want to, but I'm really comfy in the middle lane of this rotary right now. So I'm just going to keep spinning in circles. <laughs> um, I don't even remember where I was going with that, but that was just the visualization <laughs> that was popping into my head as you guys were talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know where that was going. <laughs> the past life totally bruising. lost that train of thought. <laughs> past life bruising. Oh yes, keeping us from wanting to move forward in the work that we're doing and keeping us kind of in this holding pattern. I know I had a client that I was working with and she is a amazingly talented medium, but she had a past life where harm was caused to someone and she was blamed for it. And that, that caused a lot of resistance and a lot of fear and took a lot of healing, especially around the voice and being afraid of taking up space and just being okay, being heard and doing what she knew needed to be done. And um, just seeing from the start of the session to the end of the session, like in the next few meetings that we had together, suddenly it wasn't, I'm sorry, but it was, well, this is what I'm thinking. And this is what I'm feeling. Like it was no right. longer, I'm sorry for existing. Right. And that was my point that sometimes the issues are not from this life. They're actually coming from all the realities that we still mm -hmm. stuck somewhere and people yeah. like ourselves provide that service so that people can actually relieve and and receive that level of like oh my goodness like I feel whole I feel complete and therefore I can trust myself and and who I am supposed to be and, and so yeah. on <laughs> it's almost like um forgiveness of self and acceptance mm -hmm. of self definitely. the never-ending journey we're all on <laughs> yeah definitely well thank you so much for joining us Caroline if people wanted to get in touch with you which um, avenues would you prefer they reach out to you or find you so I have a free online community called Blue Owl Convergence that, that's hosted through a mighty network and people can access that through any of my social medias like it's it's linked in it or on my website it's linked as well and that is a space where I have free trainings like really free trainings that aren't just upsells to paid trainings trainings. It's trying to share with you guys foundational information that you need to access the Akashic records or start in your personal energy healing journey or, or work forward in whatever capacity you need of building trust. So Blue Owl Convergence is an amazing resource if you want to get in contact with me and see what Blue Owl Wisdom is all about. Of course, there's my website and my email, which I provided for you guys to link in the show notes. And that's that's basically it. And, and, things. and people can also find you, I think, on TikTok at Blue Owl Wisdom. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. TikTok, Blue Owl Wisdom. Beautiful. That is where I, I make just a lot of conversational and internal thought content <laughs> and share okay. what I can share. But yeah, we're over there. Beautiful. Wonderful. Thank, well, thank you so much. Thank You're you so much, welcome. Caroline. It was a pleasure having you both. <laughs> I know. It channel. was so nice getting to sit and talk with you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>
And to our audience, please feel free to like, subscribe, and follow. And until our next podcast, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Ciao.